Hey there, today we have another core episode. We're gonna do seven crunching alternatives. Why are we doing crunching alternatives? Well, for a lot of people, crunching is not tolerant for their back. They can cause some problems because there's a lot of repetitive bending involved. And to be quite honest, there's just better exercise you can do with your time than crunches. So we're gonna go over those safe, safer exercises that are more bang for your buck that are also not gonna cause you issues afterward. Now, why are we choosing seven instead of you know, an even number, well, I mean, seven minute abs, uh, seven dwarves, seven 11, seven little chipmunks twirling on a branch, eating lots of sunflowers on your uncle's ranch. You know that old uh, children's tale by the sea, right? That's fine, we have a blooper. Is it still going? All right, so enough of that mumbo jumbo. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a position in developmental kinesiology called three months supine. We're gonna use that position because it's similarly, it looks similar to a crunch and we can get similar activation or stimulation from this position as we would a crunch anyway. Reach! First, I'll show you what three months supine looks like, and then we'll do some variations on top of that to hit our seven crunching alternatives. All right, so this position, simply what we'll do is lie on our back, and first things first, you'll bring your belt buckle toward the nose, or think about taking your tailbone and sticking it toward the ceiling. So you wanna make sure that our fingers can't go underneath the small of the back. We don't want this, we wanna almost like glue the low back to the ground. All right, next step is if you have something to prop your legs up on, do that, like an ottoman or a couch, but it's not absolutely necessary. All right, so what we'll do from here is I'm gonna lift from the hips my knees to about belly button level, and I should keep the small of my back flat. If you're having an issue with this, getting your back flat, it's okay to scoop up a little bit more with the knees a little bit higher. And then alternatively or conversely, you can also put the knees down a little lower, but you just gotta make sure that back stays flat. All right, once we're in this position, I wanna make sure we can breathe here. We're breathing in the abdomen 360 degrees. If you're not sure about that, we'll link a little video up here in the corner so that you can check out that video on breathing. All right, now that I'm in this position, I'm simply gonna hold here and breathe maintaining position. If this is just too easy, you're not feeling your abs working, recheck that low back to make sure it's flat or even scoop that tailbone up a little bit more. Good. Can you see this, Mitch? And make sure you're not getting my good side. Okay, so the arch here, don't want that. We want to be that flat and almost lift that tailbone, that belt line up off the ground. So that small of the back's really glued and pushing into the ground. Now that I'm here and breathing, I'm really feeling my abs working while I'm filling up my balloon. So we can simply hold for time, or once we're already good at this, we can start adding some other pieces. So the next thing we have is the curl up. This is the closest thing to a crunch with this position that's not gonna put that excessive bending force in your spine. So once we're in this position, what we'll do is imagine there's a string attached to your sternum and it's being pulled up toward the ceiling. So what it'll look like is this. So you're pulling up. So I am crunching right now, but I'm not doing the full crunching and bending forward like you would see with a traditional crunch or sit up. So from here, I'm just pulling toward the ceiling. Make sure you're not turtle heading at the big fault and not straining the neck. People often will do this. This is not neck abs here. So we wanna keep that chin tucked. If it helps, push your head into the back of your hands. Keep that there as you lift from the chest. Good, and it's tough. To, keep, to do this without jutting your chin out. We have to do the best you can not to do that. Good, now we have that curl up. Number two is heel taps, same position. And what we're gonna do is make sure the small of the back stays down. And we're simply gonna keep the bend in the knees and we're gonna pivot or tap the heel down from the hip. So I'm not doing this, I'm doing this. While breathing, alternating sides keeping my back glued, not doing this, right? We don't want this, this is a waste of time. Keep that back flat, breathe, tap down. You should really start to feel, if you can see me here, I'm getting the shakes. That's what we want with this. If you can't go down that far and you lose quality or you lose position, just go halfway. Nothing wrong with that, or even a quarter of the way. All right, now if you're having an issue, an extra piece, if you're having an issue keeping your back flat with this or you're not sure what you can do, if you can jimmy rig up a band, you can slide this under your back and then, Mitch, you don't mind if you don't get my good side here. Did I use that twice now? Yeah. Okay. 
this band right here, it's gonna snap back if I don't have this pressed down. So I'm gonna push my back into the band here and my legs are up and I'm gonna do the same move. So if you see the band hanging here, what you'll see is if I tap and breathe, I'm not losing it. If I'm losing position quality, what you'll see is this, right? See how it snapped out? So that's a great way to know if you're doing it right. All right, so the next move is shoulder flexion. So again, same position, and I'm gonna take a weight here, and I'm simply gonna set up, and I'm slowly gonna raise up overhead, and then hold to that point where I can't control anymore, or if it's just challenging and you're shaking. So right here, I'll just hold. If I can go a little further, I will. But if it's too much, just bring it back. You'll kind of find that point of no return where you start to cheat. So the hardest position you can do perfectly and breathe. A nice little scheme here is to do 20 seconds on, take a break for 20 seconds off, repeat for 10 rounds, it's called Tabata timing. It's a nice little like core warm up before a workout. And then once you're good at that static hold like this, you can actually add motion here. Reach overhead and bring it back. So we wanna see quality control like this and not like that. Good, that's shoulder flexion. Next one we have ISO shoulder flexion with pelvic tilt. Okay, all right, so it's the same move. We're gonna take this one, but we're gonna hold at that point of control. And then from here, we're simply gonna do some pelvic lifts. So think tailbone toward the ceiling or belt buckle toward the nose. And I'm simply gonna lift off. This looks semi-easy, but it's actually very challenging, especially to breathe at the same time. And if you don't feel your abs working there, I don't know what will. It'll immediately make you think you don't need crunches anymore because you got plenty of stuff to work that, those abs. Next, we have the band pull down. So again, you're gonna need an anchor set up here. But you'll set up your position, back flat, legs up, and you'll simply do a pull down. So before we were reaching overhead with the weight, and now we're pulling down. You can switch to one arm, you can go across, and eh, how about that? We'll switch the other arm, right? And you can play around with it. Next, we have the pal-off press. So we're gonna take the band again. See those moves? Yeah. We're gonna go with this one here. So this is a, a pal-off press variation. So the pal-off press, it's common. It's a core exercise with anti-rotation. What that means is that it's pulling on one side and I'm having to control it as I do these heartbeats. It's trying to pull me this way. I'm resisting that rotation. And we can use that same move you typically do in a standing position in the same three month position. So I'm gonna go here, come out a little bit, get in position here. And now I can feel this band is wanting to do this to me. It's wanting to go here. So if you feel that happening, scoot in a little bit. If you can't control it, come up again and we'll simply breathe and slow and control. And if you want, you can do a little bit of in and out with it, a little bit of turning. And then make sure you get the other side. And is that seven, Mitch? One, two, three, four, five. That's seven, I believe it's seven. Um, so those are seven ways or seven crunch alternatives you can use to stabilize your core, get some abs, and also not hurt your back.